See, you have orders per store for each month. And you want subtotals per quarter. First of all, you need to know that in order to do so, it might be very helpful to use the offset function. The offset function have to, has the following syntax. What is your start cell? How many rows do you want to offset? How many columns do you want to offset? What is the number of rows and the number of columns? So that's what we did right here. It is one formula that we started here and copied down. This is what the formula looks like. Sum. Then use that offset function. Start in B2 and lock the 2. So when we copy it down or to the right, B will change into C, D, but 2 will never change. And then because we have rows of three units, January, February, March, and then April, May, June, so it's the period is for three, we use three times the function rows, R-O-W-S, from B2 through B2. So this two is locked and that two is not. So it will change when you copy the formula down into B3 from B2 through B3. You multiply those rows by 3 and you subtract 3. And then you need the column offset. I leave that empty. And how many rows do you want? 3. So that formula is going to do the job. So we get a beautiful overview. Of course, I don't have to tell you that instead of using the sum function, you could also use the average function, or standard deviation, or percentile, all that kind of summary functions you can use. So it, it's a great tool. However, when you have your data like transposed more or less, and the quarters are in the columns, January, February, March, etc., 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 your formula has to be adjusted, of course. And it's going to look like this. We use that offset function again, sum, sum, offset, start in B2, no row offset this time. The column offset is three times the columns function, the columns function from B2 through B2, lock the first B2, minus three. And then you want the number of rows is 1 and the number of columns is 3. It can get a little more hectic when you have a situation like this. In this case, I used dates for the week, just week dates. So we have to sum or average or whatever five rows each time. Before we do that, let me first tell you something about this date here. That happens to be a Monday, and I copy that formula downward. I can do that with a double click, but I don't want weekends. So I click on the autofill options, and I make sure that I only fill weekdays. Notice that I have after 11.7, 11.10. I, I put a, a line there at the bottom of the cell. How did I do that? That is a conditional formatting issue. And I made that rule already, so I'm just going to edit it. And this is what the formula is. I use a formula to determine. I use the modulo function that returns the remainder of something divided by, in this case, 5. If that remainder is 0, then I want you. So in this case, I use row a1, R-O-W, A1, not rows, but row A1. So when you copy that down, and it does that internally, then it will be A2, A3, A4, and it takes the row of where A1 is located. Though I started in A2, that doesn't matter. I have row A1. So row A1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And divide each time by 5, and if the remainder is 0, then we want to format the border with a, a line at the bottom. So it will automatically do that. You can do that for the entire column if you want, but in this case I did not do that. 
So then we uh, we have to find out how we can find the first date and of the week, then the second date of the week, the third week of the week. So I have a very simple function in there, in this cell. Use the index function from A2 for A16, absolute, lock everything. And again, I use the row function. Take the row of A1 times 5 minus 4. And you copy that formula downward. And it will take all Mondays in this case. 11.17, 11.10, etc. And then we need again a sum function here based on offset. But this time I don't multiply by 3 like for quarters but by 5. I subtract 5. Remember the last argument is the number of rows and the number of columns. So this is the start cell, row offset, no column offset, and how many rows. And when you copy that formula downward and copy it to the right, it will automatically adjust all of that.